Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be creating a learner workspace from scratch. For our example, we're going to be creating two trivial packages, is even and is odd. So to get started, we'll start by creating the very fittingly named trivial packages in our file system. Then we'll CD into it, initialize git, and then initialize Lerna. Then we'll open up VS Code and see that our workspace has been created for us. In the rest of this video, we're going to create our is even and is odd packages and have one of these depend on the other and show how that is done in a Lerna workspace. We'll also show you how you can use Lerna's new NX empowered features to set up optimized builds and tests based on your workspace graph. Then we're going to show you Lerna's versioning and publishing features to get our trivial packages posted to NPM. To create our first Lerna package, we'll run the command npx Lerna create demo is odd. This will create a basic demo is odd package that we can see as a subdirectory of our packages directory. I'm going to fast track through some of the initial setup here as we're going to want to initialize, configure, and install as dev dependencies TypeScript and Jest for this example. To call out some of the steps we're taking at a high level, we'll be setting up to use TypeScript for our build command via TSC and use Jest to run a test in JavaScript against the resulting TSC build. We're also going to adjust our generated TS config file to turn on declaration files from TSC, and we're going to set the output directory to dist. We'll add dist to our git ignore so it doesn't end up in our repo, and we'll adjust our package JSON file to set main to our built JavaScript at dist slash demo is odd .js. We'll also add a types field to show where our types can be found, and we'll adjust our files to point to our disk directory where you can expect to find our distributables. Then we'll set our scripts in our package JSON to build with TSC and test by first using Lerna to run our build and then using Jest to run our tests. And don't worry, we'll show you how we can optimize this later. Now let's create a Jest test for our is odd function. And then we'll create an implementation of our is odd function in TypeScript. To run our build now, from anywhere in the workspace, we can run npx learner run build. This will actually run all of our builds in the entire workspace, which means every script name build defined in any of our repos package.json files. Keep in mind that there's nothing magic here about the script name build. We could use this for any script. To filter to only specific packages for a command, like our build, we can also provide the scope option with the name of our intended package. We can see in our disk directory now the built.js file as well as the declaration TypeScript file we were hoping to see. Now let's run the test for our package. npx learner run test dash dash scope equals demo is odd and our test passes. So now we've successfully created an individual package, but now let's create a second package that has a dependency on our first package. To do this, I'm gonna fast forward as I take every step we did to set up TypeScript and Jest in our is odd package, but this time for an is even package. But at the end here, I'll add one final step, which is to add a dependency on demo is odd in our package.json file. Because our Lerna JSON file is configured to use workspaces, we'll be using our package manager's workspace support for dependencies within our Lerna repo. Note too that when we initialize Lerna, we also set a workspaces property in our package.json to inform our package manager where to find packages. Since we're using Yarn as our package manager, let's run Yarn. And when it's finished, when we look in our node modules, we can see there's now a sim link in our file system from where demo is odd lives in our node modules to its actual source. Sim linking works like a pointer to another location in your file system, as opposed to a copied snapshot, which means as we make changes to our source code, we won't have to run the step again unless we add a new package. Now when we implement our isEven function, we can import from our demo is odd and IntelliSense and building all work as expected. Currently our workspace is functional, but if we look at our scripts, because of the way we're running our builds and tests in this workspace, our is even tests requires we manually specify to run build demo is odd first, and then build itself, and then finally run jest. 
This is especially suboptimal because we've essentially hard-coded the dependency that our isEven code depends on in our isOdd code. To improve this, let's initialize nx now by running the command npx nx init. nx is already installed by default with the latest Lerna versions. As we can see in our Lerna JSON, the use nx flag is turned on. This command did generate an nx.json at the root of our workspace, so we can further configure nx. But before we do so, let's run npx nx graph. And as we can see, nx gives us the significant benefit of calculating our dependency graph dynamically. Let's leverage this in the nx.json file by adding a target defaults property to define our build and test targets. For our test target, we can add a depends on property of build. This will make it so we can change our test for is odd in our package scripts to just run just now. Running tests for demo is odd shows us that NX now knows in order to run tests for a project, we need to run that project's build first. Going back to our nx.json file, we can also add a depends on property for our build target default. The caret syntax here means that you must run build for all of the package's dependencies before running the given package's build. Now we can go to our demo is even package JSON and adjust our build and test targets to remove any manual hard coding of the dependency chain here and simplify our scripts to just do their actual commands, TSC and jest instead of worrying about their dependencies as well. To further drive this point home, let's switch the dependency graph so that is odd depends on is even instead of the other way around. Because nx determines our graph dynamically, all we have to do is change our import statements and slightly modify the implementations in our TypeScript code. After doing so, let's first take a look at the visualization of our graph determined by nx. We can see that even though all we did was change imports in our source code, NX was able to dynamically determine our dependencies. This also means that when we run a build on a specific package, Lerna now knows to adjust dependent tasks dynamically. So building is odd now builds is even first without us having to make any changes to either package JSONs. And running test without a scope now knows to first build is even, then it can test is even and build is odd in parallel, and once is odd is done building, we can then start testing is odd. Here's a more graphical representation of that same task graph. Now that we have NX already set up at the core of our learner workspace, we can add build and test to our cacheable operations. This will allow us to instantly replay any command we've run previously based on a hash of all dependent source code. After doing this though, we can notice that if we run a build on is even here and then adjust the test files for is even, we can see that if we run a build on is even again, we actually don't get a cache hit. Even though the only file that changed was test code, that shouldn't affect the build output. By default, NX will assume that the entire directory source code is a dependency for every target, but we can further configure this inside of our NXJSON file as well. To set a mental model for this, we're going to start by creating two named inputs, all and public. The idea being that all is all the source code for the package, and that public is a subset of the package, specifically only the pieces that matter for the public API. For our workspace, we can get this subset with a glob of anything that doesn't include test in the file name. But note that things like a just config or lint config file mode qualify here as well. Once we have the two categories of named inputs, we can then add an input field to both our build and test target defaults. For our workspace's builds, our inputs include the public subset plus the public subset of any dependencies using the caret syntax we discussed earlier. For our workspace's tests, our inputs include all files of the specific package, but then only the public subset of any dependencies. With this in place, we can see that if we run a build for our, our two packages and then change the test for is even, and then run build again, NX is now empowering Lerna to know that it can simply replay the cache build, because even though we changed code that affected both packages, it did not affect the public files of our packages, and therefore we shouldn't need to rerun our builds. Now that we've optimized our workspace, let's publish our package to the npm registry. Lerna has some excellent tools here for versioning and publishing, starting with the Lerna version command. Let's commit our work so far, and then run Lerna version and we'll say this is a major version. Using this utility command, Lerna will manage our package JSON and Lerna JSON for us. 
We can now publish to NPM using Learn Up Publish from Package. Since we already updated our versions in our package.json files, we can now publish any missing versions to NPM. Learner also exposes lifecycle hooks to the publishing and versioning process via specially named package scripts. Let's add a pre-packed script to our root package.json to run all of our tests to make sure they all pass before actually hitting publish. Now let's commit that change and run Learner Publish now without versioning first, and we can see that Learner will lump in the versioning for us as well as run all our tests before publishing now with that prepack hook set. That's it for our Learner Crash Course. Be sure to check out our official documentation site in the description below to get more details on Learner, and be sure to check out the channel for more videos in the upcoming weeks. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.